What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Ads Unscrewed. We've got a clanger for you today. What's up, guys? Welcome back. So I've got a very interesting one today. My guest is, he's, he's one of those, those, those famous folks that you get a hold of by knowing someone who in turn knows somebody. So I'm fortunate enough today to introduce to you the incredible. What's up, hey, brother? What's up? Hey, what's up? Thank you for joining us today, man. Man, thanks for having me, dude. Feeling a little bit starstruck here at the moment, bro. You are literally the most famous person on my show ever. You hold that title. No way. Come oh, on. absolutely. 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 This channel started with like interviewing random aunties and shit. No, no offense to my other guests. I'm going to get a lot of hate mail because of that. But <laughs> guys, we have in front of us an established musician, sound engineer, and inter I think it's fair to say quite international DJ. Is that fair to say, Ian? Yeah, yeah, it's fair to say. We have the, this guy has traveled the world. He has played with people that you cannot even imagine. He has won accolades that we can only dream of, guys. I'm going to ask Ian to give you a little bit better of an explanation than I can. Ian, tell us where it started. How did you get to where you are today? Okay, so, well, where does one start? Dude, I have been a absolute fan of music my entire life. Literally, um, I started playing instruments from a very young age and uh, decided from very early that music was going to be uh, definitely my, um, well, I mean, a, a consideration for a career, but definitely a huge part of my life. Yes. Um, yeah, I started off playing instruments from about 15, 16. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a drummer by forte play guitar, play piano, um, and all this kind of stuff. And I guess, you know, you know, growing up playing all these instruments, I realized there's only a few avenues you can really go into, uh, you know, as a musician. And I wanted to kind of broaden it a bit. So uh, I went into sound engineering, decided sound engineering would be my future. And um, from sound engineering, uh, I went into post-production and it was there where I met a couple of my friends who introduced me because I was, I was actually quite a rock a rock drummer and a jazz drummer by, by uh, creation. And um, I met my house friends. And the day I met my house music friends, uh, everything changed. I was, uh, I was an engineer for a company called Velvet Films. I was doing scores for film. I was doing, uh, you know, uh, radio. I was doing uh, TV ads and stuff like that. And uh, I, the DJ bug bit. So, um, you know, obviously being a music producer and producing music for all the films and stuff that I was doing there, Yes, I uh, I ended up getting into DJing kind of by well, <laughs> almost almost forced into it. It wasn't really voluntary. I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> um, so I was working for the company, and uh, there was this J and B mix competition that was on in in Joburg, yeah. and uh, I figured, what the hell? I'll, I'll give it a bash. So I entered. It was an online thing. You produce a track, you mix it, and you upload it. And uh, I got selected for this thing uh, by DJ Monday, the late DJ Monday. God rest his soul. And, um, yeah, I was, I was automatically put onto this album with, you know, kind of like everyone in SA. It was Black Coffee, Fresh, Lady wow. Leah, Roger Good, Dina Moran. So I was like, whoa, okay. Um, really stoked. Got to work with Euphonic back then, which was really cool. Uh, you know, when Euphonic just came into the scene, obviously, you know, just such a great guy and such a legend. Yeah. Um, got to work with him, made a track on this album. Then all of a sudden started getting phone calls and people were like, listen, so we want to book you to come DJ. And I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. And uh, so that's when <laughs> I took up the, the, yeah, I took up the DJ path. That's, I mean, that's, that's actually an unbelievable story. Do you still remember your first gig ever? Ooh. So what classifies as my first professional gig? Your first professional gig in front of all those people. I think the first one was Tanzanite. There was a club in Four Ways called Tanzanite. Yeah. And I played a few gigs before that, but I wouldn't say, oh, look, that went, I guess what makes you a professional? You get paid to do what you're doing. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I guess my first one was Tanzanite, uh, pumping club, kind of got thrown on me last minute by the DJ who was a friend of mine. And he's like, dude, uh, I can't make it this week. You have to play. I'm like, uh, okay, done. And uh, I'll never forget... 
I put on a very brave face, but I, I realized very fast how bad <laughs> I was at a microphone and had to fix my microphone voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other conversation I'm going to have with you just now. Oh, sure. Tips. <laughs> Continue, please. <laughs> so, yeah, dude, uh, it started there. And then it was um, from my first residency at Tanzanite to tons of clubs throughout Joburg. Um, you know, tons of gigs started getting booked in Mozambique and abroad. And then uh, there was the big pivotal moment for me, which was, um, you know, I've been playing everywhere, been doing lots of radio stuff, been doing lots of TV stuff, been pushing – and then uh, there was a, a competition that I spotted online, um, and I was a big EDM DJ. So doing a lot yes. of EDM, doing a lot of remixes, mashups of like you know commercial uh, like tracks with you know banging electro beats. That's what I used to do yeah. back in the day. And uh, I checked uh, one of my favorite DJs at the time, Steve Aoki, had a competition on. So yeah, I gave it a bash. It was to remix one of his uh, tracks and then to go and perform in Amsterdam. And uh, yeah, man, that was that was the pivotal moment for me. When I won that, that's what took me uh, international. That's when I got, uh, you know, I got to travel, got to open for Steve, got residency in Ibiza, uh, and yeah, man, that, that was that was that was when it all changed. How did you feel when you received that invite to to the Amsterdam um, competition? What 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 went through, went through your head? Because I mean, you know, when when I enter a competition, I never sort of, I just sort of, you know, fill out the form or submit the the online form, whatever the case may be. I'm like, yeah, there goes two minutes. I'm never going to get back. You know, what what went through your head when you actually got so, that call back? I mean, I can remember. I can remember the moment exactly. Um, it was an it was an email that I saw late. Uh, I'm terrible with my emails. I'll just be honest about it now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, got this email and uh, I was going through my email, lying in bed um, and checked this email late. Literally jumped out of bed. So stoked. I mean, I've been, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been trying to get overseas, uh, you know, for years at that point. And uh, you know, it's not an easy market to break into. Um, and, and you never think you're going to win a competition or at least even get entered into these things. You kind of look at them online and you think, you know, I'll do it for, uh, you know, for like fun, see what happens. I'll, I'll never forget jumping out of bed. Super stoked, got hold of everybody, lost my mind. I, I, I can't imagine ever I, ever being invited to something like that. I mean, and, and Steve himself, what what is he like as a person? Because I would imagine you would have had to interact with him at some stage. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, we hung out a lot. Um, wow, dude, what a gent. What a gent. Funny, brilliant, uh, hardworking as hell. Dedicated. Um, look, I learned a lot from him, and that I, uh, you know, I took, uh, I took a lot of pages out of his book. Uh, this is a man who'd get there early. This is a man who'd go over and above. This is the man who would prepare for hours and on end, you know, for for sets. And uh, uh, dude, just a great guy. Really, really, really solid guy. I mean, that, that, that's absolutely incredible, man. Let, let, let's talk about this, this microphone voice, because before we started the stream, I did mention to you that one of my, one of my, one of my closet dreams was to be an actual radio personality. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm saddened to say that, that yeah, I, I quite honestly failed at that, but that's not the point here. I always wanted to be a radio personality. Now, what does it take? To, to, to make it in a studio. Um, is, it, is, it, is it personality? Is it voice? You know, if, if you have a dry sense of humor, can you get through there? If you have a piece of, dry piece of toast, does it work for you? You know, what does it take to sit in their chair and actually engage with an audience every day? You know, it's, it's, it's simple. Be yourself. Be honest. Be legit. Um, don't put anything on. Like, like I was talking about my radio voice uh, or, or yeah. the voice I used to put on on the mic when I started. For some reason, I started sounding American, like, immediately. And I'm like, what am I doing? Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why, why? It, you know what I mean? So just be honest, be yourself, be legit, just, you know, and relax in front of the mic or the camera, when you know, wherever you are, obviously. The, 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 the trick is, I guess there's no trick. It's just to be honest is the key. To be honest, to be true to yourself. Look, I like to think that if I were myself, you know, in, in, in a public radio station, I would probably be removed very quickly. The the Broadcast and Complaints Commission wouldn't necessarily be a fan of old ads over here. So, yeah, there would, there would have to be a little bit of a watered-down, censored version of myself. Uh, I would drop a spontaneous F-bomb and be in the MD's office in no time. Um, so I'm, so I'm biting my tongue out now. I'm biting my tongue. Like, I, I, Listen, I drop F-bombs left, right, and center. I'm a sailor. I won't lie. Um, if you follow me on, 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 on social, you'll see... 
I like to poke, but um, ach, it's easy, man. You just remember that sometimes you've got an audience that doesn't appreciate those things. And, you know, I respect human beings and I respect life, so I try my best. No, 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 look, absolutely, man. Look, I mean, I, my, my channel is a free place. You know, YouTube are probably going to hate me, but we are a good people over here up in Ed's Unscrewed World, and we literally have no boundaries. Obviously, we keep clothes on and stuff. I mean, you know, there's certain boundaries, you know. But, um, yeah, no, let, let's get back straight into it. We've actually got a, we've got a, a question here from Chanel. She says, any DJ that you would absolutely love to collaborate with, who would that be? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, any DJ? I'm not Obviously really someone DJ. you haven't already would collaborated with. <laughs> well, I think it would be a – so if, if it would be anyone, it would be a producer, obviously, um, producer DJ. I, uh, I've been wanting to work with a, a few guys for a while, but I think at the moment – uh, Yord comes to mind. Yord is one of my personal favorites. If you know who Yord is, um, you know, you could probably post a link later. What a legend, what a sound. What, why, why Yord? Let me tell you why. It comes down to production quality. It comes down to the human. It comes down to, um, you know, the entire image of, 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 of the guy. You know, it's very important to be working with guys that are wholesome, that are, um, you know, doing it for the right reasons as well. But, yeah. of course, producing you know, high, high, high quality music. And uh, I think Yord, yeah, Yord, have to be. That's a fair answer. I think what we'll do is we will post a link to some uh, some of Yord stuff a little bit later. And now, now I've actually just been thinking while you've been speaking, this is this is kind of the way things work here. The, the, the wheels turn while my guests speak and I arrive at the next question. I want to know, now that you've played in front of all sorts of audiences, do yeah. you find that the, the the vibe of the audience differs from country to country? Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, you've got to be so prepped for just about anything when you when you know when you're leaving the border because yeah, it's it's chalk and cheese. I mean, the the people are uh, you know at a different place in terms of what they're hearing on the radio, what they're hearing, and what they're listening to. Um, wow, the way they party is completely different. I mean, it's yeah, man, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we got another question here from Kyle. Who's the best ginger friend you have? <laughs> Assuming that's Kyle, it. <laughs> what's up, boy? <laughs> How's it, boy? Kyle's my favorite ginger. I'll be honest. Uh, good, to, good to see we've got some support for good old Ian over here. Guys, well done. Yeah, so that's pretty interesting. So the crowds do differ. I mean, I suppose different people, different different worlds, and like you say, different things that they hear on the radio. Now, my next question is, <laughs> what was your what was your best moments on stage? Let's start with the let, let's start with the positive note. Let's start with the best, and then what was the worst, most embarrassing? Did someone throw a dildo at your head? What is the most embarrassing moment you've ever experienced on stage? Ah, uh, the best moment. You know, I've had so many great moments, but I think one sticks out. One comes to mind every single time. Uh, playing in Mallorca in Spain. Um, wow, what a crowd. I mean, it was like 10,000 people. It was just nuts. Wow. And that was when I got to open up for Steve, thanks to the competition. Um, and I played there. It was myself, Steve Oki, and Calvin Harris. And wow. it was just a moment where I realized – you know, um, looking at the crowd, just the togetherness of everyone, you know, at that moment, that was probably my best moment ever. Like I've seen, you know, I've seen big crowds, but yes. I think that was, look, that was the biggest crowd at the time in front of me ever. And it just, it was an epiphany almost that, you know, everything I've been doing my whole life has built up to this moment for the exact reason I hoped it would, to bring people together, you know? Yes. And, and that, uh, that would definitely be my best moment. Best, best, best moment. You know, it's, it's very rare that somebody actually takes a minute to take all of that in. You know that. The people tend to get, and professionals in any industry, get so obsessed in what, they, what they're busy with that they don't take a minute to smell the flowers. So that's quite refreshing. Now, Ian, the moment we've all been waiting for, your most embarrassing or slash worst on stage. I don't know if it's so embarrassing, but for me it was like, it was fantastic. It was just, oh God, it was embarrassing. It was at uh, Tiger Tiger 
in four yeah. ways. When Tiger Tiger used to be in four ways in Joburg. Mm. And uh and I, I can't remember it was <laughs> It was it was a Friday night. No, it was a Saturday night. It was a Saturday night, and I've been gigging so much at that point. I've been like day in and day out for you know for months, uh, and I would yeah. play, you know, almost every night of the week at a stage. And uh, and I jumped on the mic, and I'm like, "You guys are absolutely crazy. Who the hell goes out plays like this on a Thursday with work tomorrow?" Put the mic down, and the owner's like, uh, "But it's Saturday." Um, <laughs> And I picked, I picked up the mic. I'm like, evidently, I'm having such a good time. It's Saturday. My bad. And, oh, God, I felt small. But uh, I guess that's probably <laughs> one of my most. Yeah, that was one of my most. But I've had, I've had many. I mean, well, what? I've your, your mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> I've bailed off the stage before. I mean. I have you. Yeah, I know. When I started DJing, so, I mean, look, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a party animal. So I love having yeah. a good time. And uh, when I started DJing, I used to jump off the DJ box, go join the crowd, and then do a backflip in the crowd. Oh my God. You know, like chewing. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, and, and I'd run back up to the D, you know, DJ box. And once I did this and I, I bailed, I fell on my ass <clears throat> and, uh, and started to run back up. And God, just people were just loving it. They thought it was the funniest thing since sliced cheese. So, oh, geez, I can absolutely imagine. I mean, I'm one of those guys. If I were to fall in public, I almost springboard straight up. And I'm a relatively big oak, so that's no easy thing to do. But there's no way I'm going to give as many people the chance to see me on the floor. So it's like boom, boom. It's like that Facebook video where that oak falls off the treadmill because he's checking that chick's ass out and he just jumps into flipping push-ups. I'm like <laughs> one of those. I'm able to sort of springboard up and then you sort of save yourself because one or two people see it. But, you know, by the time the others turn around, you don't see jack squat. Yeah. You know what? You, you get so used to, you know, people watching you do stuff that eventually, you know, you. I don't get, look, I, I don't get embarrassed really at all. And all my friends will tell you the same thing. Like, you can't embarrass Ian because... It's it's just what what, what you're gonna do, you know. Like you're just human, and you got to be yourself. So things happen. But I suppose that sort of attitude comes with experience. I mean, I'm sure in the beginning, it's you you literally double checking everything you're doing. Oh yeah, no, of course, of course, because you think that it's you know you've got to carry this image, and you you've got to be the certain human, and you got to get likes and all that nonsense. But eventually, you get over that, and you realize, you know what. Uh, I'm doing this because this is what I do. And uh, if people dig it, they dig it. In fact, if anything, you know, the, the glitches, those are the ones that people remember, the mistakes and the, you know, and the fluffs and stuff. And that's part of who you are. It's character. Shows, shows that you're a human being, I guess, you know. So well, what is it? What, what, the, the moments, I mean, when you've got multiple DJs doing their sets on a stage and you're sort of waiting in the background for your turn. What kind of what's going through your mind? Is your heart pumping? You ready to take over? Is what does that moment sort of feel like? Just just for those of us who will probably never experience it, that moment you walk out and you take over the crowd. Um, I think that's a good way to describe it. Butterflies, guaranteed. Um, I still get butterflies when I play nowadays because you know I really do hold myself to the highest standards and make you know I, I bring the best that I can. Um, I think you know. I'm there to make sure that people have the best time possible, you know, and, and uh, the whole point of what we do is to, you know, help people let go of their worries and, and you know, and all the hardships of life. And yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's obviously a lot of pressure on me because, uh, you know, you, I've got how many people standing in front of me, you know, like I'm um, going, well, can you do what the last guy did? And then you start thinking, well, the last guy was uh, laid back Luke or, uh, or Dimitri Vegas, like Mike, like when I, mm. you know, took over, and these are the guys I took over in, uh, from in, uh, Amnesia and Ibiza and watching them just going like, I mean, so many stories go around where, where, you know, people are saying they play re pre-recorded sets, this, that, and the next. I'll tell mm. you what, these guys are talented, hardworking, genius, technical individuals that push the boundaries of technology in front of these, in front of these crowds and you know standing next to them you, that's that, the pressure really starts kicking in because you know respect's a big deal for me in life i respect human beings and uh, you know i'd like to be respected you know based on the fact that yes. i put in a lot of hard work for what i do and having these guys you know uh, you know in front of me <laughs> knowing that i'm about to take over and uh, and i have to you know kind of make an impression 
dude, it's 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 hectic. It's uh, it's it's a lot that rests on you. But you know what? You you take it in stride. You get up there. You do your best, and you, and you you have a good time. As long as you're having a good time, you know most of the people are gonna have a good time too. But yeah. um, yeah, the pressure is real. No, the pressure is real. No, for sure. Do you do you ever find yourself do you, do you ever find yourself sort of measuring yourself up against the, the the performance that you've sort of got to follow, or do you just go out there with the attitude like right that was their thing this is my thing? You know, I never ever measure myself up against anyone else. I yes. uh, what I do do is I'm I'm always pushing myself against myself in my last performance. Right. Um, you know, if if you, if you're comparing yourself to other people, that's not fair. It's like apples and oranges. Yes. For me, I'm always trying to best myself. So. Um, if anybody I'm trying to really impress, and I'll be dead honest, in, in, in my years, you know, in the DJ box, the people that give me the best input, I can guarantee you now are the barmen and the bar ladies. These, yeah. these, are, people, these are people that are there every night. They, they're all the time. You know, they know what a really good performance is. They've seen it all. And right. uh, nine times out of ten, I'd, I'd find myself going to the bar staff and going like, so like, how was it? Was it good? <laughs> and then I know if I did a good enough job or not. <laughs> that's actually an interesting little tip i mean geez i don't think anybody really thinks about that hey eh? you don't you don't look at the people who are there night after night day after day week after week yeah now my next question for you is if ian wasn't ian credible if you weren't the international dj music producer what would you be this is always an interesting one i quite enjoy this um, I, my first passion was uh, aviation. I wanted to be a pilot. Oh. Yeah, so a I think pilot. if anything, I probably would have been a pilot. But if anyone knows me, and uh, and my friends pretty much know me, I I I can't be locked down to just one thing. As yeah. a creative, you know, I'm known as a DJ, I'm known as a music producer, but um, I'm a, I'm an artist. So I went to National School of Arts uh, growing up, and. Uh, I love painting, I love drawing, I love acting, I love dancing, I love singing, I love, you know, obviously producing music, playing music. So what would I have been if I wasn't a DJ and, well, an artist, and if I was going into any other career, probably be a pilot, I guess. Yeah, I know, shit. Look, with, with, with the amount of money that I owe the JMPD, I think I would have been a really shit pilot. But, I mean, that's a story for another day and definitely not a public platform like this. Now, I'm going to play a little video quickly. Um, it's about two minutes long. It's, it's, it's about the, the, the previously mentioned um, competition that uh, Ian won uh, um, with Steve Aoki. I think it'll be interesting for people to see this. I'm kind of hoping it's the right one. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of Ian Credible content all over YouTube. It's not, not isolated to just your channel. It's friggin'. So I'll try to pick it out. I hope it's, I hope it's sort of PG, like... 17, 18, we'll see. But let's have a look, guys. Hang on. just such a good opportunity you know giving us a break to get up there and getting new producers up there I think it's a phenomenal uh, initiative it just was a great fusion between what we've been doing with Denmark 
and what Omeka is doing now with DJs and new producers. So it just was a perfect fit. There you have it, guys. Wow, that, that's actually incredible. I didn't realize how many entrants there were. I mean, they were talking about thousands of entrants, and I mean, your mix made it right in there, and then you made it to first. That that is freaking unbelievable. Thanks, man. And that was that was in 2013. A, a little bit less on the facial hair I saw there. Yeah, no, 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 no. Very, very, very young. In fact, I've made a pact to never not have facial hair again. <laughs> and i mean you know I, in, in that video i could see what that meant to you winning that competition i mean you literally were brought to your knees you know it's it's been a culmination of my entire life um what what, what a lot of people don't know and what a, pe a lot of people assume is like guys like us just come from like uh you know come from a lot you know come from silver spoon homes and all that um what a lot of people don't realize about realize about me is uh I, you know i was raised in children's homes in boys town my mom. Oh, wow. So, uh, so yeah, and uh, and then and then uh, I was taken in by an amazing foster family, and um, I'm a self-made human, you know. So it's 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 it was like a do or die for me, you know. This was my opportunity. This was this was my time to shine, and you know, I I brought it. I brought it all. I, I brought the whole thing because obviously they flew us down to Amsterdam to the Pioneer headquarters, uh, you, you know, in Rotterdam. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I'm standing there in front of. You know, Mix Mag, uh, Steve Aoki, and the, you know my, my favorite brand in the world, Pioneer, in their building, and uh, you know, like it, it, it was now and ever. So for me, that that moment was the most unbelievable moment of my life. I won't lie. Uh, it was it was clear to see. I mean, you could see exactly what it meant to you. I mean, I you know I, d I didn't get to watch that full video, but you know I, it's what what I do notice about DJs, and I, and I mentioned to you briefly before the show that it's something I've always been interested in, and I've maybe I've maybe never had the. I mean, I'm a creative myself. I'm in design, marketing, digital marketing, all of that sort of crap, and I've never quite maybe had the technical know how or skill to work with music. It's something that I've always been interested in sort of dabbling in and getting involved in um, along with radio, being an actual radio DJ. Um, but it's amazing to see the energy that's required to do what you guys do. I mean, if I look at the videos and I watched a few videos of you, especially on YouTube earlier, and you quite literally never stop moving. You are jumping, you are jamming, you are living the moment, living the music. You are turning knobs, you are flicking switches, you are changing this, you are changing that. It's actually unbelievable to see how almost fit you have to be. You know, it's funny you say that. Anyone who knows me knows that I fidget nonstop. <laughs> I'm like a regular fidgeter. In fact, I've got fidget things around me all the time. Like, uh, I don't, I really don't stop moving. So, like, I've got, like, things like this uh, sitting around. It's these new magnet things. I've got, uh, like, tons of stuff. <laughs> I was going to buy one of those just the other day. Oh, they're the best. And, uh, and, 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 you know, being a drummer and stuff like that, I'm always tapping on, I'm tapping on everything, driving people crazy. I get asked regularly, and where the hell do you get your energy from? And uh, I, I don't know. I, can't, I don't know what to tell you. I'll, I'll be dead honest. You know, I'm just I'm really happy to be alive. And, I'm, you know, it's a privilege to be alive. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. Um, yeah. I think when you've, when you've come from hardships and you've come from a lot and, and you've seen what, uh, you know, what, you know, uh, what you, where you could have been and where you are now and how much you have and, and you know, how much, it, it, you know, it's, it's exciting to be alive and have the opportunity to you know, do what you love or at least try. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. I find it, uh, I find the energy somewhere. Like I'm just really stoked. You know, I love, I love people. People are my favorite thing. And, uh, you know, I love people watching. I love hanging out with people and, you know, that they, they're probably my favorite pastime, but, um, <laughs> you know, like the, I want to, you know, I want to live life to the fullest and that's why I have the energy. I want to meet everybody. I want to find out what their story is, where they came from, what they've done, you know, what they're doing in their lives. Like, um, yeah. So I find energy just you yeah. know, in that. I guess. So, and I mean, it's, it's, it's actually, I just, I can't get over how much movement is involved there. I think honest to God, I think if I had to play just a single set, first of all, I don't know if I would make it through. It would feel like I've just done a CrossFit class, but, um, 
it's 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 a, it's it's just an incredible thing to actually witness and actually see. I mean, I've I've been to I've been to clubs before, but I mean, I've you know my focus was never on the DJ. My focus has always been on you know the the circle of friends that I'm with and the drinks that we're having, whatever the case may be. The music's there, it's in the background. But when you actually see a person performing, there's a difference. And the funny thing is, at the moment, you know, no disrespect to DJs across the board, but you get DJs. And then you get performers. And there's a very key difference there. And I've noticed it because I've been to places where the DJ's in his booth and he's kind of like. Yeah. Yep. Have a yep, sip, yep. Of his, sip of his drink. <laughs> that chat to the chickens at the booth. And then you get the performers. The performers like yourself. So there's a very, very big, there's a very big difference there. You got the guys who click play and you guys got the guys who make play. Now, when we started DJing, um, she's man, I'm gonna give away my age many years ago. Um, you know, <laughs> back in the day, what, 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 what all these new DJs and I guess a lot of new people who, who are looking at DJs now because the light's been shone on them and that they don't realize how we used to get to these gigs really early carrying boxes of vinyls that were extremely heavy. And we would play all night. There, there, this, there wasn't this culture of come in and play for an hour and then leave. We would start at eight, nine o'clock and leave the club at four o'clock after, you know, cashing up and getting paid. And, uh, and we do it all over again. And that, and then, you know, obviously to, 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 to show people, you know, a good time, you've got to have a good time. That's, you know, that's essential. So, yeah. you know, that energy for you, you count the hours. We were really putting in the hours when we started. Um, we non-stop moving, man. And let alone the fact that it's like, it's intense, you know, mentally as well. The, the mental strain is, is real because you, you can't put a foot out of line. One wrong song and God, you get drinks thrown at you and crazy oh things. Oh yeah, no, no. Well, you get the most amazing people at these places, obviously after a couple of drinks. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, I've heard of, of, of people throwing bras and panties and shit, even the odd plastic cup, but you know, that takes it to the next level. I suppose oh, yeah. I suppose when people are on that high and then they hear something that just sort of like doesn't resonate with them and it, it brings them sort of down here somewhere in a moment. So I, I guess, I guess, I guess that holds water. That definitely holds water. How long, yeah. how long is the average set? I mean, does it vary? Do you get time slots? How does that all work? So like you were saying earlier, you know, is it different uh, abroad as opposed to here? It's different everywhere. It wow. all depends where you're playing. It also depends. Um, nowadays, comp yeah, it, it depends. On, are, you, are you asking about long ago? Are you asking about now? Nowadays, you're looking at uh, in, 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 in also you got to factor in which genre you're playing and which club you're right. playing. If it's a commercial club, a lot of the time nowadays, it's just come in, play for an hour, max two. Um, but when you go into like underground genres like techno, um, tech, and and in, in Ibiza, which that is you know hugely prominent, you you you're doing proper sets. You're doing like a, a minimum two, three, four hour set. Wow. Um, obviously, because That's there's a lot of purists. Minutes. Yeah, there's a lot of purist DJs still there, and they're still doing it the way that we always used to. Because in order to take a, you know a crowd on a journey, you need time. You can't do it in an hour. Yes. So, so it's so, it so you're saying like, a, like an hour, an hour's for commercial. So it's 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 sort of even is it even calling it remixing? It's sort of just remastering or remixing um, commercial songs that are big at that particular time. Is is that the sort of difference? Look, it's basically to, it's basically an appearance. Playing for an hour is like just coming to show your face. Um, ah. Yeah, you know, I'm taking a risk saying this. A lot of guys will. You know, throw things at me, in. but uh, your old school <laughs> DJs, purist DJs, will will probably agree with me. You know, like a proper DJ has to. A, a real DJ needs time to take you on a journey. You know what I'm saying? We've got to start yes. somewhere, we've got to peak somewhere, and we've got to we've got to end somewhere. And you can't do that in an hour. In an hour, it's like, you know, you probably went to the toilet and missed half of it. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Now, something else that we touched on prior to this, um, prior to our stream, uh, um, Ian and I had about 10 minutes where we just sort of debugged and went through the, the sort of uh, proceedings. COVID. Yeah, and and what, 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 what actually impressed me is that you've got a very, very different outlook compared to, let's say, the majority of the country. And the world, in fact, how did how did COVID affect you, and what is it what is it sort of done to the entertainment industry as a whole? 
I'm gonna be very careful when I say something here. <laughs> Look, it's 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 definitely it's definitely you know had a huge impact. We all know this. Um, you know, it's it's taken a lot of jobs away, a lot of money. Um, you know, I chat to guys in the industry all the time. I've got best friends who are who run events and uh, and and you know, it's it's been strenuous. It's been heavy. Um, but at the same time, you know, the way that I see things is it's very simple. You can't, uh, you know, you can't always mope and make any situation a crutch or, 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 you know, like you can't use anything as an excuse. As far as I'm concerned, whatever situation you're put in, you've got to try and find the best out of it. You've got to you make the best of it. Um, yeah. You know, with my life being what it was growing up, etc. cetera, you know, one of my favorite quotes of all time, in fact, I have a tattooed on my body is improvise, adapt, overcome. And, uh, you know, hard times are going to happen, whether it's COVID, whatever it is. It's, it's yeah. what you do with those times that, that, that matters. Like, so to put it into context and perspective, the entire COVID time, obviously, I've not been playing live gigs. Um, it's been rough. Uh, I've been missing the stage a hell of a lot. But it's given me time to reflect and spend a ton of time in studio where I have uh, I've produced a lot of music, which I'm really excited to release in the new year. I've honed in on a lot of extra things that I've been trying to do for ages, but haven't had the time to. And it kind of forced me you know, into my office, into my office chair and said, well, come on, like, now's the time. I mean, that, that, that's an incredibly positive way to look at it. Um, you know, even before you said it, I kind of saw where you were going with the whole thing. And I mean, it's 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 the glass half full mentality as opposed to the glass, glass half empty, isn't it? I mean, um, you know, if I look back, I mean, COVID, COVID smashed me hard as an individual, man. I, I can't even tell you. But, you know, having said that, I've run into a lot of opportunities of late that probably would never have happened, you know, if, if I... Uh, if, if if COVID didn't hit us, um, I would not have um, I would not have had the, the the courage to to do the whole the the things that I've done up until now. I wouldn't have had the courage to start a YouTube channel. Let me tell you that you know when you got a face for radio and a voice for nothing, um, it's a t tough one. But uh, you know you're right. I mean it's it's actually made me reflect on my situation quite well. And I mean I think I think some other people out there as well. It's you know COVID's been detrimental to pretty much any industry and if I look at um, the eventing industry as a whole, you know it 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 would demolish um, entertainment as well. It almost it almost falls you know within in line with each other. And yeah. um, so so besides your new releases, what is next for Ian Credible? I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to push you like like Derek Watts on Carte Blanche. What's next? Well, yeah. How do I answer this um, without giving anything away? Very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm always reinventing myself, and I'm always trying to push boundaries. I'm always trying to come up with something new. Uh, as soon as I start getting stagnant or stale, you know, I I pull back. I try and get a bit of perspective. Um, <clears throat> You know, like uh, what I'm actually doing this weekend. I go hiking. I go away. I, you know, I, I get some alone time. You know, with nature and and uh, uh, and try and kind of trying to figure out like a new direction to reinvent what I've already been doing. So it's not always like there's nothing hugely new, except there's definitely another big chapter coming. I can say that. I've been getting a lot. Well, I've been getting involved a lot more with TV. Oh, uh, yeah. So it looks like a lot more TV stuff, a lot more video stuff. Um, not just not just music. So if anything I can say is there's going to be a lot more of my face involved in just you know, the music and the voice. Going to have to give it a little bit of a clean shave there, man. <laughs> Trying to pick my roles carefully. Yes, man. Now, I'll tell you what, we, we, whenever I shave, and I, I shaved recently, the other day I looked like Bin Laden's son. Now, whenever I shave, I tend to look like, uh, I, I shave about 10 years off. I tend to look very young, and I don't, it's not a look that I like. I feel as if people don't take me seriously when I shave. <laughs> I get exactly the same, because I've got a baby face, and like uh, I said earlier, I'm never, never shaving ever again. Like, I look at myself, and it, I mean, it's scary. I don't, I don't love that look. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of it for myself either. I must say, I I I almost take myself more seriously when I'm when I've actually got a beard. Now, as a creative, here's another question that just tapped me on the shoulder, as they tend to. I know I know with myself that. I am without a doubt my worst critic. You know, sometimes I will design shit or create a strategy or 
and I look at it and I think, I can't believe, Adam, that you became up with this piece of shit. What the hell is wrong with you? However, the client looks at it and they're like, And you sit there as a creative and you kind of go, fucking hell, what's wrong with these people? Like, it's so shit. But, in, but I mean, that's on the inside. On the outside, you're like, yeah, no, fuck it. Nothing. You know what I mean? Do, do you find that you are your own worst critic? Oh, God. It took me so long to get to a point where I actually believed I could put anything out. <laughs> and, and, and I say this, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. You know, like, I was like, this is absolute horseradish. I, I, this sounds like cuck. I mean, I'm not going to lie, my first, my first job I worked at, you know, I was doing Final Mix for, for like a couple of films, a well, lot, lot of films, a lot of TV stuff, and it would go out and I'd be like, yeah, yeah, it's great. Get home and almost cry myself to sleep because I'm like, this is just <laughs> rubbish. Absolutely terrible. But then I realized, and you know, it, I've heard this so many times in life and uh, I guess it's the only thing that's kind of got me through. A creative needs to create and that's, that's as simple as it is. So whatever you can do with your skills at the time, you do. And, uh, and, and you put it out. And, and you know what? People are going to like and people are going to hate the same thing. You're going to have people on your side and people throwing tomatoes. Like, <laughs> it's, just, it's just how it goes. Like, I, dude, I, I fight that battle all the time. And then the only way I can actually get past it is to give myself deadlines and say, well, I said it's going to be <laughs> done by now, so now it's done. So, like, I'm moving on. Otherwise, I'll never get it done. Slap yourself. Yeah, no. Look, I, I hear what you're saying. It's, it's just, it's, it's amazing how, how you as the creator perceive your work, and yet well, yeah. it's amazing how people on the outside perceive your work. It's two different stories, you know. You sitting there, and you're going, "Fuck, should I have presented that? What does it sound like? What is he thinking? I don't like it. It must be shit." And on the other end of the table, the people are like in awe. They're like, "Oh." <gasps> Ah, you know, we got this for cheap. You know what I mean? Like, so it's it's amazing. It's amazing to see how different individuals think. Um, and you, sh you should never, you should never change that. Never get rid of that because I guess that's what pushes you to be better all the time and improve yourself. So it's, I mean, it's a very important thing to have as a human being. But um, I mean, you can't let that. You can't let that hold you back as well. You know, people, are, hmm. they they want to see you create. You're creative, so put the no, stuff out right. and, and just let it happen. No, you're right. I think I think arrogance is a very dangerous game or a very oh. dangerous thing. Let's put it that way. When you oh. think you are, when you think you're too good, I think that's when you're possibly at your worst. And people pick up on that vibe. It's funny you bring that up. I uh, I I'm I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm a big hater of the ego. Yeah. You know, so incredible. You know, when when we came up with the name incredible, it was actually a friend of mine. I actually who, wanted to uh, ask you about that. Perfect. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. So we were throwing out names. We we're trying everything. And as a joke, you know, uh, one of my friends, uh, Dinesh, he was like, what about Ian Credible? I'm like, dude, that's cheesy and terrible and great. Let's do that. Because of the simple reason that I didn't want to be taken so damn serious. You know, and so many people have like you know, this idea that you have to be a certain way and you have to act and talk a certain way. And I realized that if I had something like that, that was kind of disarming and tongue in cheek, at least people would laugh at first, or at least, you know, think like, well, really? And it worked. It worked because I'm a, I'm, I'm a very laid back kind of human. I enjoy having a good time, like whatever I can do to have a good time and whatever I can do to help you have a good time. So yeah, man, that's, uh, mean, that's, that, 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 that's what it's all about. I mean, when I came up with a name for my channel, you know, I tell you, some of the shit that came up, it was frightening to me because there were some there were some bad ones. I'm not gonna lie. In fact, I'll, I'll you know I'll never repeat them on this platform. But there were some nasty ones. So with my name being Adam, uh, you know, my friends have always called me ads. It, it kind of just worked, and it was always gonna have ads in it. Like you've got Ian, I've got ads, and some of the shit that followed. I was always looking. I was in the search for that second word, and the hardest thing for me was. You know, I wasn't a hundred percent sure what my channel was about. You know, and 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 it's hard to sort of come up with that name. It's like trying to name your business, but you have no idea what you're going to sell, what service you're going to offer. So, you know, I'm known to be a bit before de Coppen. So, unscrewed. It 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 it, it kind of just works. You know, at first I looked at it and I thought, Jesus, what a lot of shit. You know, and then, you know, what? I thought to myself, shit, dude, if you don't create this channel, you're just never going to do it. So stop 
fucking second guessing yourself and just do it and shit i did it and you know Look, it, like I've, you said, kind of works. Honest, i know a lot of guys doing stuff you know since lockdown obviously going like i mean i yeah. even jumped on the bandwagon just before lockdown i'm like dude i need to do more live stuff and more mm. streaming and get the thing together and uh i gotta be very careful when i say this i guess but there's like a lot of people who just jumped into it but didn't really have you know a, a, an inkling yeah, of a thought about you know like maybe this is a little out of my reach mm. maybe i've never you know really understood quality levels when it comes to production video putting things together and dude you've done a great job man this is great <laughs> cheers man thank you now look i mean coming from you that means a lot you know i've, I've kind of been i've kind of been working on not so much not so much coming out of my shell i've always been a sort of loud and proud i like to try and be the life of the party i'm just that guy sense of humor loud as you can hear i've never had a problem speaking i've just i've been trying to find my voice on this platform and it's it's been a bit of a journey i'll be honest you know at one stage i was speaking too much like a butz everything was yo like man you know let's go let's go chaff the chicky you know <laughs> it was it was too much like a like the east ender that i am you know and and i was doing the boys in edenville proud and shit even boxburg and bononi but I needed to I needed to sort of reinvent myself and become that much more professional. As you can see, I'm very expressive with my hands like the Italian folk. Because prior to that, I used to sit here and kind of go, Hi guys, welcome to Ads Unscrewed. Um this is a channel about um, you know, so now I'm very expressive. I make sure that I move, I make sure that I engage. So it's it's a learning process. So to hear you say that means the absolute world to me. Thank you so much, no, my brother. Do you for real and i mean it like it's great it's really been i mean it's been great just doing this with someone local that uh i mean it's a great back and forth this is it's informative it's champion dude. It's really you good. are so sweet you're calling someone from edenville local Fuck. <laughs> hey i, like I was from I'm, I'm from the veil by the way are you i knew there was a i was born was in orange party. grove i uh oh. yeah 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 um and then obviously a large part of my life was in the veil I knew that you see, I knew there was a boot connection somewhere. I, I knew there was, I felt it when we started the stream, but I never want to come out and say, a boot connection, yeah. Are you a boot? Yeah, a boot <laughs> So that's fantastic. Ian, so you've got a very, very impressive contact list, am I right? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> okay, guys, you've just heard Ian agree on a recording. That he's gonna hook ads up and screw it up with all the wonderful, colorful people that he knows. He he yeah. he's already agreed. He nodded. He acknowledged. He cannot reverse out of it. <laughs> Pressure, yeah, done, dude. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> done, dude. Of course. <laughs> after the after the stream ends, gonna be like, what the fuck did you get me into? But Ian, look, we're going to cut it off there, my bad. Um, sort of 45, 50 minutes is sort of people's tolerance. So we're going to definitely cut it off there. But what I would like to invite you to do is once we can figure out the whole, um, the, 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 the doing a set on stream type thing, I think we must definitely set that up. Even if it's just a couple of tracks that you line up for us, I think people would really, really be interested. And guys, if it's something that you would be interested in hearing, a live stream, a live, a live part, we can actually make a big event of over it. We can we can do something something cool. We'll see if we can line up some other people, whatever the case may be. But if it is something that you would like to see, please drop some comments, drop me a mail. Everybody knows how to contact me. Don't kill me in my driveway, but everybody knows how to contact me. Um, so yeah, no, fantastic, yeah, incredible, ladies and gentlemen. Round of applause. We don't have the fake, uh, the fake clapping in the background, unfortunately, but Yay. I'm getting there. I'm growing. We're gonna have the oh, oh, yeah. I'm, are you For a sound sure. engineer? I know you can hook me up. <laughs> uh, guys. Ian's uh, socials are at the bottom. That is his Facebook page. Go give him a follow. Go give him a like. A lot of awesome stuff that he posts there. And my everybody knows my socials by now. My channel, I kind of put it everywhere. I'm like a graffiti art artist with a blank wall. Ian, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us. Uh, you don't know what it means to me. I absolutely appreciate it. Obviously, um, you know, a young YouTuber, me not being very young, but the channel being young, it's uh, it's, it's it's it means a lot that you took the time out of your day to you know to to, to jump on you and engage with my audience and obviously myself. Really appreciate it, my man. Absolute pleasure, bud. Thanks for having me.
over to the to the link in the bio with which will go there subscribe we, we we interview interesting people week in week out just like ian credible ian thanks my brother i really really appreciate it and cue the outro.